This is a Fox News alert on this breaking news night. President Trump delivers a message to James Comey before the fired FBI director gets ready to testify before Congress on Thursday. He says, I wish him luck. Circus Sarah Carter, John Solomon will join us in a few minutes with reaction. They also have an explosive new report they will share with us. Also tonight, Eric Trump, Laura Ingram, Mike Huckabee, Lou Dobbs will all be here. But first, the federal government has charged a 25-year-old government contractor for allegedly leaking an NSA document, and it is raising more questions than answers. For starters, why did she have top security clearance in the first place? Also, the mainstream media is lying. Yes, lying to you yet again. And about their lies, well, that's tonight's important opening monologue. All right, a new report from the website The Intercept appears to have led to the arrest of a federal government contractor named Reality Winner. Now, when making the announcement yesterday, the Department of Justice did not specify what winner is accused of leaking or which news outlet she allegedly leaked the information to. But the DOJ statement was released about an hour after The Intercept published its report. And according to the article, which cites a leaked NSA document, Russian intelligence, military intelligence, allegedly launched a cyber attack against a voting software supplier and sent phishing emails to over 100 election officials. Now, of course, some liberals hyperventilating in the destroyed Trump media, they are jumping on this and purposefully mischaracterizing all of this. And you know what? They are once again lying to you, the American people. They are claiming it's a smoking gun that Russia changed actual vote tallies. Now, take a look, for example, at this headline from Newsweek. Who won the election? NSA report suggests Russia might have hacked voting system. Now, here's the problem. If you actually take the time and read the leaked NSA document, it does not draw any conclusions about the potential impact of so-called Russian interference on the outcome of the 2016 election. Even a columnist for Bloomberg is pointing out that the media is not telling you the truth about what is truly and really going on here. Now, the headline reads, the leaked NSA report is being read backward. Now, in it, he makes great points, which we verified. And according to the Intercept's report, Russian hackers did target a voting software company that is called VR Systems. Now, what liberals and members of the Destroy Trump propaganda media will not tell you is that seven of the eight states that use VR systems they include the following. California, Florida, Illinois, Indiana, New York, North Carolina, West Virginia. They use paper-based systems. And the eighth state, Virginia, is mostly paper-based. So if they hacked into this company, okay, it's all paper-based, so, well, that would not have made a difference in the outcome of the election. Wow, truth matters. And more importantly, in the key swing states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, they don't use VR systems at all. So let's use logic and common sense. If Russia really was going to hack the elections through this system, wouldn't they have targeted the key swing states? Now, if that does not blow the Russia conspiracy theory completely out of the water that you're being fed today, well, there's also this. Back in January, while testifying before Congress, the former director of national intelligence, James Clapper, said that Russia election interference did not, did not have any impact of actual vote tallies. Watch him. First, we cannot say they, they did not change any uh, vote tallies or, or any, anything of that sort. Yeah, I'm just uh, talking and we have about no, it. We have no way of gauging uh, the impact that certainly the intelligence community can't gauge the impact it had on uh, choices the electorate made. Now, the former FBI director, James Comey, and the current director of the NSA, Admiral Mike Rogers, have also said the same thing. Now, on top of that, we also have the former director of national intelligence, Clapper, and several prominent Democrats admitting, we have played this before, no smoking gun that they have seen, no evidence whatsoever, in spite of thousands of, of hours of black helicopter, tinfoil hat conspiracy coverage of Russia collusion. What's the Democrats and the security intelligence agencies tell you directly? Have you seen anything that suggests any collusion between the Russians and the Trump campaign? Well, there's an awful lot of 
smoke there, let's put it that way, people that might have said they were involved, to what extent they were involved, to what extent the president might have known about these people or whatever. There's nothing there from that standpoint that we have seen directly linking uh, our president to any of that. The last time we spoke, Senator, I asked you if you had actually seen evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians, and you said to me, and I'm quoting you now, you said, not at this time. Has anything changed since uh, we spoke last? Well, not yet. no, it hasn't. I know we need to go soon, but just yes. to be clear, we haven't. There has been no actual evidence yet. No, it has not been. Okay. I just want no, to it has not been. At the time I left, I did not have, see any smoking gun certitude evidence of collusion. Is there any evidence of collusion that you have seen yet? Is there? There is a lot of smoke. We have no smoking gun at this point. Now that we've once again, I don't think anyone else in the media does this, we have shot down these pathetic attempts to smear President Trump. I want to now ask some very serious questions about this alleged leaker. Okay, why did this 25-year-old that's named Reality Winner ever have access to this kind of information in the first place? Now, according to reports about her social media posts, well, okay, she's very political, a huge Bernie Sanders supporter who hates the President Donald Trump. She also reportedly tweeted that, quote, being white is terrorism. And she also allegedly vowed to stand with the Iranians. And what's even more shocking is that the NSA, well, they may overlook certain red flags in favor of people who have, well, okay, particular skills like Reality Winner. And according to her report, she was apparently fluent in languages that are spoken in Iran and Afghanistan. And according to Matthew Aid, an intelligence historian who spoke to the NBC News, quote, the vast majority of people who do the National Security Agency's intercept work, who translate and analyze, most of them are fresh out of high school. High school? Are you kidding me? And then he continued, there are thousands and thousands of 18 to 21 year olds doing critically important and secret work around the world. So apparently the NSA doesn't care about your background. As long as you have certain abilities, you can get top security clearance in this country. Wow. Now, here's my opinion. Reality winner is a very small fish in the deep state pond. And let me make a point here. And I think it needs to be raised. And as for the liberals out there, I'm asking questions. These questions need to be asked. And one of the itsy bitsy, teeny weeny problems that we have in all of this, do you remember WikiLeaks? Remember what they revealed in Vault 7? And by the way, what Vladimir Putin claimed just the other night? According to information that WikiLeaks released about the CIA, and the tactics they used, they did this back in March, the spy agency has a database of malware that was created by other countries. In other words, they can disguise their own hacking attempts and make it look like a foreign country and foreign actor carried it out, put their fingerprints on their own attack. That's something we've got to think about. And in an interview over the weekend with NBC, well, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, he actually said the same thing. Take a look at this. I haven't seen even once any direct proof of Russian interference in the presidential election in the United States. What could be easier in this day and age than using all the technical means at the disposal of the intelligence services and using those means to organize some attacks and then pointing the finger at Russia? We don't care who's the head of the United States. We know more or less what is going to happen. And so in this regard, even if we wanted to, it wouldn't make sense for us to interfere. Now, do I trust Vladimir Putin? No. Nobody does. Former KGB guy. But here's the important part. WikiLeaks has been saying the same thing. Now, WikiLeaks, like them or not, they have not been proven wrong once, not one time in 11 years. So could it be possible? And we don't have all the information at this point. It'll in include a deeper dive on our part and the parts of others. But I want to be very clear here. I would argue, and this is important, 99.9 percent .9 of those that do work in our intelligence community, I believe, are good people. They're patriotic Americans. They're brave. They work to keep us safe in a very evil, dark, and dangerous world. They have nothing to do with any of this deep state stuff. But the big problem we have in this country is this. We have deep state selective leaking that is designed by some in power that clearly want to hurt 
and I would argue even take down the President of the United States and overturn the election that you voted for last November. You have these Obama holdovers. You have, for example, if this young woman is, is a minnow, then you have the deep state sharks at the top of the food chain that would be orchestrating this sabotage and misuse of our intelligence community. We need to find out who they are. They need to go and be removed because they're hurting the country and they're purposely advancing their own political agenda and weaponizing the use of intelligence that only should be used for our security. Now, also tonight, ABC News is reporting that James Comey, all right, is testifying Thursday before Congress, will, quote, stop short of saying that President Trump obstructed justice. By the way, that's a smart move for the former FBI director, because as we've been telling you, he was never going to say that. You want to know why? Take a look at the side of your screen. As my friend, colleague Greg Jarrett pointed out, if Comey thought Trump did anything wrong back in January, oh, yeah, he would have broken those two laws because he had a legal obligation to come forward and tell people. And by the way, on May 3rd, well, James Comey also said it never happened. So he'd be contradicting himself. Also, earlier today, President Trump wished Comey good luck on Thursday. Also tonight, one last point. Sarah Carter, John Solomon are out with a huge story. Here's the headline. Ex-Intel contractor sues Comey, alleging FBI covered up mass civil liberties violations. And joining us now with their special report and more, Sarah Carter, John Solomon. Um, John, I'll start with you. Anything I'm saying here that's wrong, in your view? Well, listen, uh, we have a man tonight that filed a lawsuit that walked out of the NSA, CIA, and FBI with 47 hard drives, 600 million documents that were classified. This is way larger than Snowden. He gave it back to the FBI and said, the reason I took him is I want to sit down and show you all these mass civil liberties, and nobody's heard about this in the last two years. Uh, I, I think it's a pretty important story, and it goes to this larger issue of how much abuse may be going on but beneath the intelligence community's cover. And we, we need to get an answer about how often our identities are compromised, how often our privacy is affected. We've been, been looking at this for three months, and there's a lot of concrete evidence, facts, that there are violations going on that need to be addressed. And, and Sarah, so what your report is saying here is you had an ex-Intel contractor suing Comey saying that the FBI, on a mass scale, covered up mass civil liberties violations against Americans, and he has evidence. Isn't that a little bit bigger than, than Russia collusion with no evidence, as I just proved up to this point? Yeah, that, absolutely. That's, uh, this, is, this is on a much larger scale. We have seen the itemized reports of the 47, and we've posted them on our website at Circa.com, of the itemized uh, list of hard drives that he gave to the FBI, signed by the FBI. We have all the documentation to show this. And think about this, Sean. He said, and I just spoke to him before I came to see you, he said he unmasked with the technology that he had, with the NSA, over 20 million Americans, 600 oh million gosh. documents. He said if you stack those up, that's 30 miles high, 30 miles high, but over 20 million Americans. And I said, well, what was it you were unmasking? He said everything from their bank accounts, their homes, their records, phone conversations, emails, he was able to take down every single firewall. And it was so distressing because, you know, this is what he was directed to do. And when he tried to do the right thing, and he did, in his opinion, the right thing and got the immunity agreement from the FBI, the FBI decided to not move forward, to not did, move forward with that did, investigation. And that's all did he Did Comey know about this? Because the headline is that he's suing Comey alleging this mass cover-up of civil liberties violations, and you're telling me 20 million? 20 million? This is the biggest... Million. Wow. Did, did Comey know? According, according uh, to Dennis Montgomery, who is alleging that all of this happened and who is willing, he said, I am more than willing to tell anybody, face anyone, face Comey, face former director uh, Robert Mueller, 
who was working at the FBI at the time when he began his work, because he spent nine years, nine years working uh, with them, started out with the FBI, then went on into the CIA NSA realm. Um, and so when he began this, he said that, you know, he was willing to talk to anyone and testify before anybody, face Clapper, face Brennan, face Comey, and, and he would not back down, even though wow. he is right now, um, he's struggling with some health issues. He just wants to get the story out. John, I'll give you the last word. I'm imagining that if it's more information than even Edward Snowden, that there's beyond smoking gun evidence here. When will the American people see this? Well, it's gonna. It's been assigned to a very well-respected judge, Judge Richard Leon, here in District of Columbia. He's the judge that previously ruled that the NSA had violated Americans' privacy, and the court process is going to play out now. And there will be a venue now where Americans can find out if these things are true and if their violations have been going on that uh, have been swept under the rug by our government. And, and you've been able to see what evidence? We have been able to see that he did get an immunity agreement, that he did turn documents over to the FBI. So that part of his story is confirmed. Wow. And now his lawsuit lays out the actual predicate. Sarah did a great interview with him with some really fascinating insights on what he witnessed during his nine years as a contractor. Guys, we'll have you back tomorrow. This is huge. Thank you for your hard work. This is important for our Constitution and you, the American people. We'll continue on this story, I promise. And next, tonight, on this busy breaking news night on Hannity. It's the greatest hoax of, of all time. I was there throughout the campaign. We have no dealings in Russia. We have no projects in Russia. President Trump's son, Eric Trump, calls out the Democrats and members of the mainstream media on the issue of the Russia collusion story. He calls it a hoax, also talks about the abuse of his family. He's in studio. And also tonight, new information about the three London terrorists, one featured in an almost year-long documentary the jihadis next door saying Allahu Akbar and under the ISIS flag? Why was he even in the country? More Ingram ways and also Mike Huckabee, Lou Dobbs tonight. And welcome back to Hannity. So with the destroyed Trump media floating baseless Russia conspiracy theories every second of every day. And of course, Democrats on Capitol Hill desperately searching for any evidence of collusion. Well, President Trump's sons, they are now coming to his defense and they're speaking out with Eric Trump now calling the Russia probe, quote, the greatest hoax of all time. Joining us now, the man himself, executive vice president of the Trump Organization, Eric Trump. How are you? Hey, Sean. How are well, you? Don't you wish you went to Washington so you could be dealing with this every second of every day? You know what? I, I've never seen hatred like this. I mean, it, to me, they're not even people. It's, it's so, so sad. I mean, morality is just gone. Uh, morals have flown out the window. We deserve so much better than this as a You're country. Right. And, you know, it's so sad. You see the Democratic Party. They're imploding. They're imploding. They have no message. You see the head of the DNC, who is a total whack job. There's no leadership there. And so what do they do? They become obstructionists because they have no message of their own. They have no solid candidates of their own. They lost the election that they should have won because they spent seven times the amount of money that my father spent. They have no message, so what do they try and do? They try and obstruct a great man. They try and obstruct his family. They come after us viciously. Eric, I got to And it's I truly, truly something. horrible. I actually would use the term with Kathy Griffin and a CNN anchor calling your father uh, a piece of shh, all right, and a conspiracy theory that every intelligence officer and top Democrats have all said there's no evidence of, and thousands of hours of coverage, but they've gone after your 11-year-old uh, brother, they've gone after your soon-to-be-born child, they've gone after you, which is fine, Don, you guys probably have more fair game, but really, your sister, and really the First Lady, and really Kellyanne, and anybody that seems to like your father, they want to, what I say, they want to delegitimize his presidency. They want to stop his agenda, and if they can, they want to impeach him. Who are all in this, by the way, for the right reason. I mean, I, I, look at that POS comment that you made, right? Somebody on CNN, an anchor on CNN, called the father on the show a piece of... That's right. right. You, you, might be, you might be an opinionated person, but you don't use profanities. You don't... You're not a child when it, when it comes to calling people names. I mean, I got attacked today. I've raised $16.3 million for St. Jude. 16.3. I've dedicated By my the age of what? By the, you I, I started when I was 21. I've raised $16.3 million for the greatest hospital in the world at St. Jude. And I get attacked for it. Barron gets attacked. People come out, they look at my wife. Well, I hope she, you know, I hope the kid is aborted because God forbid there's another Trump in the world. I mean... 
the manners, the, 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 the lack of morals in society is awful. And honestly, I blame most of these politicians, and I blame the media, because it's out of control. I mean, the way they act are out of control. And honestly, it's because the Democratic Party is sinking. And I mean that sincerely. They don't have a message. They don't have leadership. So they obstruct. And it's just, it's really the worst of the worst, Sean. I really feel your outrage because I'm here reporting it, reading it, seeing it every night. I think your criticism is dead on accurate. I said journalism is dead. It's, it's dead, dead and buried and it's horrible. Um, you know, look at the, what is your reaction to the Russia collusion theory with no evidence? Clapper, no evidence. Admiral Rogers, no evidence. Comey, Brennan, no evidence. Feinstein, Maxine Waters, uh, Manchin, uh, Warner, it just, no, no evidence, thousands of hours of coverage. How about myself? How about Don? Right? How about the whole family who is by his side every single day? Every single day we were sitting there fighting. We had a very, very small team. I've said it from the beginning. We don't have projects in Russia. We don't have loans from Russia. I've said this a thousand times. We had no involvement in Russia. But there's no other narrative. They don't, they don't have the voice of the American people. They don't have things that make sense for this country. They did a terrible job with, with jobs. They lost industry. They lost the economy. I mean, look, look at the stock market right now. Under my father, since Election Day, the stock market is up 15 percent. I mean, 15 percent since Election every, Day. Every Consumer economic confidence is, 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 is at an at all-time high. America is back. You see how he's treated when he goes over to the Middle East. Versus Obama, when he came off Air Force One, they wouldn't even bring a set of stairs up to the plane. That's how little respect they had for this nation. And honestly, it scares the other side, Sean. It scares the other party. How bad? Do you worry this goes even further? Yeah. Because I, I actually think that it was such a shock and trauma to their system because nobody saw it coming because they were so biased and even the media colluding with the Clinton campaign. I don't know where this ends. This is now, we set a new low. Kathy Griffin, for example. If they're willing your, to, your 11 year old brother saw this, right? If they're willing to attack an 11 year old boy, if they're willing to attack a 22 year old girl going off to law school, meaning Tiffany, right. if they're able to attack my wife and an unborn child, First Lady, if, if they're able to attack the First Lady, if they're able to attack somebody who's raised $16.3 million for dying children, his sister, it is truly, truly sick. And my father's a great man, and he's going to do a great job for this country. But honestly, we need to bring some principle back. We have to bring some manners back. We need to bring some respect back. Um, it's sad. He's going to do a great job for this nation. I mean, he's really, he already has done a great job I for this nation. I think I'm the and only person that ever not. reports his success or the things he's accomplished and the promises he's kept. But they, would, they would rather see him. They would rather see him fail than have America succeed. And I've said that a million times, and I really believe that that's the ugliness of Washington, D.C. I can totally understand the passion that you're showing. Eric, great to see you. Right. Thanks great for doing this. And congratulations right. on the baby, too. Thank you very much. All right, when we come back, one of the London terror suspects actually appears in a year-long documentary called The Jihadi Next Door. Uh, why was he in the country? Also a report tonight that he worked on the London Underground. That's right, the terrorist. Laura Ingram has reaction. Plus, President Trump calls out the mainstream media for their abusively biased reporting. We'll check in with Mike Huckabee. Also. Good evening and live from America's News Headquarters. I'm Jack Ibanez in New York. The president of France will hold a special security meeting tomorrow to examine new counterterrorism measures. It follows today's attack outside of Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. A man armed with a hammer shouted, this is for Syria, as he wounded a policeman. The attacker was shot and wounded. France has been under a state of emergency since the November 2015 terror attacks that killed 130 people. The government now wants it extended until November 1st. And former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn turning over documents to a Senate panel investigating Russia's meddling in the 2016 presidential election. The records were handed in after two subpoenas were sent to Flynn after he invoked his Fifth Amendment rights. Flynn was fired in February for failing to disclose his conversations with the Russian ambassador to the U.S. I'm Jackie Ibanez. Now back to Hannity. For all of your headlines, log on to foxnews.com. 
Well, welcome back to Hannity. So the world remains on edge as terrorists continue launching attacks against the West. Earlier today, the third London terrorist was in fact identified. Now, the 22-year-old was reportedly detained last year while attempting to travel to Syria from Italy. And as we showed you yesterday, according to reports, one of the other London terrorists, there he is on the screen, was featured in a 2016 documentary that went on for almost a year called The Jihadis Next Door. Now, major news organizations like even The New York Times, even CNN, Sky News, also reported that the suspect is in the film. But British Metropolitan Police, they have not confirmed if the suspect did, in fact, appear in the documentary. However, Channel 4 put out video on its Facebook page. And by the way, they ran the series that features a scene. Pay very close attention to the ISIS flag and what he says. that you may have had someone had an ISIS looking flag on them. Are you insane? Are you insane? Sir, 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 what you sir, 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 what for what? Search for what? Why are you touching him? What are you saying? What are you saying? You're lying! You're lying! I'm not. You're a liar! You're all detained. Yes. For the purposes of a search. Okay. Under section 4 of terrorism. Where's the... You're lying now! The only English white person who's a non-Muslim was part of our group. But because he's white and he's English, he can go. But all of us that were just praying, we have to stay. This is the reality. This is the reality. This is the reality. Don't forget all the laws and all this. This is the reality. Now, media outlets are also reporting that he worked for a short time on the London Underground and could have had access to the subway tunnels. But the attacks are not restricted just to the UK. Yesterday, Melbourne, Australia, an alleged terrorist killed a man and held a woman hostage. And today, a man attacked a police officer with a hammer near Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, France, and reportedly screamed, this is for Syria. Here now with Reaction, editor-in-chief of Life Z, Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated radio host, Laura Ingram. All right, really? Jihadi next door? It goes on for nearly a year. ISIS flag, Sharia will be the rule of London at 10 Downing Street, and they let him stay. How in God's name is that possible? That we is also, obscene to yeah. me. Go ahead. We, all, we also found out late today, Sean, that the police in London never approached Channel 4 never asked for any of the footage, never asked to review any of the footage, never asked any questions about what they had filmed in the park that day. And all of the uh, interviews they had done for the, uh, for the extent that this show was on the, on the air in, in England. And that, that, to me, is shocking. Now, you actually have a television show on television for a year and it's clear that these guys are ranged wannabe killers. I mean, to anyone, it's like obvious. If they could, they would blow up uh, any apostate that they, and they ran across. If they could, if they had the means and they had the opportunity. It's fairly obvious, just looking at them, unless they're just acting the whole thing, which I guess they could have been doing. Uh, but the fact that the police didn't think it even merited a follow-up with Channel 4, uh, I find wow. that to be really disturbing. And they revealed that late today. You know, but remember, there's been an attempt at accommodation all across Europe, 80 plus Sharia courts in Great Britain. The guy saying Allahu Akbar, the guy is, he actually said Sharia's coming to the UK. The black flag, the ISIS flag you see here, one day is going to be at 10 Downing Street. What's going to happen? You're going to face a backlash in this country. They let him yeah. do a, a, a real jihadis of, of Beverly Hills like show, <laughs> yeah. and they didn't arrest the guy. It is beyond Nothing. incomprehension. But you're right. And remember, they, they block out people from coming into London. You know, Michael Savage, radio host, he can't go to London. Other people have, have, have been blocked from going to Canada. Remember, Mark Stein had that. He was declared the persona non grata. So the people they want to keep out are usually people warning them about what's actually befalling them now. 
it, it, it's it's what's up is down, what's left is right. It's complete madness. But this is this is the cost of multi multiculturalism at all costs. I mean, there's no there's no question. Laura, thanks for being with us. Great to see you. When we come back, President Trump laces into the mainstream media in a series of tweets this morning. By the way, can you blame him? Now, this, of course, after they have it, CNN, you can see, oh, this is where you're going to stand. This is how you're going to hold, hold up your signs and literally staging a protest. We'll get reaction from former Governor Mike Huckabee and also tonight. Do you think the vote count could have been affected by the Russians? Oh, I, I definitely think so. All right, crybaby, sore loser Tim Kaine trying to push the Russia conspiracy theory and saying, well, that's what cost him and Hillary the election. Lou Dobbs has reaction. Straight ahead. Welcome back to Hannity. So the Destroy Trump media, well, they're working overtime. They're hell-bent on taking down the president and his administration. But the president, he's fighting back. This morning he tweeted, quote, the fake mainstream media is working so hard trying to get me not to use social media. Now they hate that I can get the honest and unfiltered message out. He went on to write, sorry, folks, but if I would have relied on the fake news of CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, Washington Post, New York Times, I would have had zero chance of winning the White House. By the way, and speaking of fake news, CNN, the Clinton News Network, they continue to receive widespread backlash tonight after being caught on tape. Look at this. They are literally orchestrating a group of anti-terror Muslim demonstrators. Oh, you see the white guy in the white shirt? Oh, this we're going to stand here and, okay, everybody, and put your signs up this high so we get to see your sign and your face. Now, CNN can deny it all they want, that they were staging protests. They're saying it's nonsense, but as you can see, yeah, it looks like they're staging a protest. Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. Fake news three, two, one, action. Now, if that's the news network that the president, by the way, would want to use for a conduit, I don't think so. Wouldn't be smart. Joining us now, former presidential candidate, governor of Arkansas, uh, Fox News contributor Mike Huckabee. All right, governor, I'm going to keep rolling this tape. This cracks me up. You know, you got the guy in the white shirt there. I'm explaining. He's literally saying, all right, sit here. And then he shows everybody how to hold up their placards and their, their protest signs. What did you think when you saw that? It's two and a half minutes. Sean, there used to be maybe careless journalism where people just didn't do a good job editing. Maybe they didn't check their sources real well. Maybe they rushed in and tried to get something on quickly without uh, going through the necessary process to determine the veracity of this story. This isn't careless journalism. This is corrupt journalism. And there's a big difference. And what we're seeing today is a widespread level of corrupt journalism where people are doing what they're doing. They're doing it intentionally. They're doing it with an agenda. They're no longer reporting the news and trying to educate viewers or readers. They're trying to indoctrinate them. They're not telling them what the facts are and letting them think. They're telling them what they ought to think. And in order to do that, they are carefully selecting what they tell them. You know, Governor, I don't think I've ever seen it this bad. I see that the media, number one, they never thought Trump could win, did they? Then he wins. No, they didn't. And, and see, they so want to delegitimize him, stop his agenda, and really undermine the votes of the American people. That's where it gets, to me, elitist, insulting, and actually, frankly, dangerous with the power they can have. Every consumer has to become his or her own editor anymore, because in the old days, somebody would sit at the editorial desk and they would determine which stories are the most important. And importance was based largely on which had the greatest impact on people's lives, which ones were, were legitimately important. Now it's which ones will make the president look bad. So they ignore his infrastructure proposal. They ignore his trip to the Middle East. They ignore uh, uh, efforts to change the tax code and the tax rate and to grow the economy and the fact that the stock market is responding. And so they focus on what James Comey is going to say on Thursday. And did the Russians somehow mess with the elections? And poor Hillary, uh, she was cheated out of the election because she was really the popular vote winner. Sean, this is why I say it's not careless journalism. Yep. It's corrupt journalism, and that's intentional on their part. You know, I'm going to play CNN reporting on Trump's ice cream habits, but they've also reported on his mental competency. So, and MSNBC has done the same thing. They've also, does he have a hand phobia? And does he have a ramp and a stairs phobia? I, just watch the ice cream one, because 
this is so superfluous in the age of ISIS and 50 million Americans on food stamps and in poverty and 95 million out of the labor force. This is what they think is news. Watch this. Apparently, the president gets two scoops. You know, everyone else around the table gets one. Uh, and no word if there were sprinkles. At the dessert course, he gets two scoops of vanilla ice cream with his chocolate cream pie instead of the single scoop for everyone else. If you add another host saying the president's a, a piece of, you know what, and then you have Kathy Griffin in her little ISIS pose with the president's head, it seems to me you that have if any of this happened in the Obama years, what would have happened? What would have been the reaction? Well, if, let's say, Fox News or Breitbart or any conservative-leaning uh, news entity had done the same thing, we would never have heard the end of it, and people would be demanding that advertisers quit and people get fired. But some of the most ridiculous things are when you see uh, people like Joe Scarborough saying that the president is not well. Sean, I was not aware that Joe had gone to medical school and had a medical degree and could make a diagnosis <laughs> of a patient without even having examined him. Poor I mean, he's Joe. better than Dr. Oz and Dr. Phil, for gosh sake. Governor, yeah, great to see you. And coming up next on this busy breaking news night tonight, thanks for being with us here on Hannity. You think the vote count could have been affected by the Russians? Oh, I, I definitely think so. All right, crybaby sore loser, Senator Tim Kaine, he continues to peddle this, well, black helicopter, Russia conspiracy theory. Lou Dobbs will react. That's coming up next. Earlier today, crybaby sore loser, Senator Tim Kaine, refused to take the blame for the blistering 2016 election loss and continues to push the Trump. Russia collusion conspiracy theory, even though there's no evidence, none, zip, nada. Watch this. Do you think the vote count could have been affected by the Russians? Oh, I, I definitely think so. And let's just make a let's make a distinction here. Um, I don't think anybody has suggested that the actual tallies on the machines were affected, although that's certainly something we should look at. But I haven't heard anybody suggest that there's evidence that that occurred. Um, but when the, when the combined weight of the intelligence committees say that Russia was engaging in a wide-ranging pattern of action to affect the election, to say there was, we can determine that there was no effect, you'd be foolish to say that. Here's reaction. He's laughing from the Fox Business Network, our friend Lou Dobbs. By the way, if it's so bad to influence elections, didn't Obama try to influence the Israeli election? Yeah, actually, they did. The, the Obama election team influencing that election, trying to win it, destroy Netanyahu. And the rest of it is, uh, you know, this country's been involved in a few elections around the world. The Russians have actually been engaged in uh, our elections for about 40 years. So it, it, this is a but, peculiar time to take an interest. And, and every Comey and Clapper and Rogers and, and, and Mark Warner and Feinstein and Maxine Waters and Joe, they've all said no evidence of collusion. Yeah, and that's yeah. the pantheon of liberal deep thinkers, too. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't imagine anybody would resist that. You know, I, you know, it's unfair. You're making me laugh every time you're on this show. That's not fair. It's disarming. I, well, I apologize for that. I, I, James Clapper uh, makes me laugh. I, I, the idea that the DNI, the Director of National Intelligence, uh, is on CNN talking with, uh, with Como. Uh, and he says, this is James Clapper. Can I quote this real Yeah, go ahead. Of course. says, as they are looking for evidence of Russian Trump collusion, Clapper says, well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that, that there's collusion, but I also have to say that with respect to the issue of collusion, <laughs> as I've said before, I've testified in effect. I saw in effect, no evidence. I, I love that. I saw no direct evidence of political collusion between the campaign and the Trump campaign and the Russians. Cuomo's follow on question. Are you ready? He says, now clarify that point. <laughs> this well, point has been clarified for seven doggone months. Let, let me put on the screen, and this just happened last week, and we showed our audience. These are all Hillary's excuses just last week, in the last week alone, who she blames for the election. 24. There's one thing missing on that list. How about blaming herself? Yeah, you know, and she did miss the opportunity to throw in Tim Kaine's name, which I think really should get some prominence in that list. He was not good in that debate. Oh, he, he's something. And then the, the nonsensical answer again on collusion. 
He sucks the life out of every moment filled with energy politically, and then he sucks the truth out of that moment as well. So are I don't know what's left. Are you worried to the extent that the media is sort of like group think one voice and a narrative with no evidence that has consumed thousands of hours? Yeah. And, and for example, I knew Comey wasn't going to say on Thursday that the president tried to obstruct justice, and I'll tell you why. Because in May he said it didn't happen, he's on tape, and 18 U.S.C. Uh, 4 mm -hmm. would mean he would have committed a felony that he didn't report it in January when Trump mentioned Flint. And, you know, I never worry about truth when it comes to lawyers speaking uh, before Congress because they have an entirely different definition of truth than you and, and I. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about matching up words. They never worry about it, uh, these attorneys, and certainly this uh, If it was former, you, you'd be thrown in a pokey. Absolutely, and, yeah. and, and, and seemingly appropriately if you do. All right, Lou, i got to roll. Um, you got it. Good to see you. Great to see you. All right, weeknight, 7, Fox Business Network. And when we come back, all right, this is a really important question. Lou said he's going to go online and he's going to give his answer. Our question of the day, your help needed, straight ahead.